How you guys doing? It's Nikolai of Global Seafoods North America. This time around, as with the black cod miso, we're doing some salmon glazed miso. Uh, some salmon miso. Oh my gosh, we're doing some salmon that is miso glazed. So here we have sockeye salmon, big fillet. Once again, we're gonna cut this up into portions. So here's the way we're gonna do it. First off, we gotta make sure that our knife is nice and sharpened. We're going to use our honing rod here. Remember, a sharp knife is an important part of your kitchen. If your knife is dull, you're more likely to cut yourself with it. And as a matter of fact, scientifically speaking, a sharp knife cuts through the cellular structure of whatever you're cutting through better, letting out some of those juices, actually adding flavor. So if your knife is dull and ripping through it, you're actually losing flavor. So we're going to take the salmon here. We are going to cut it into portions. Perfect. Now we're gonna make our marinade. Just like we did last time, we're gonna add, first off, some sake, all right? And of course, I'm gonna open up this bottle. We are going to make sure the sake is good. We're going to... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pour some in here. About a quarter cup. We're going to get some mirin. This is sweet cooking rice wine. Pour some in there. About a quarter cup as well. And next, we're going to grab our miso paste this time we're using once again white miso paste it's a soybean paste same stuff you put into miso soup don't don't confuse this for miso soup mix you can't just mix this into a bowl of hot water and make miso soup a little more complicated than that not too complicated maybe we'll go over it sometime so we're going to take some of this and we're going to get a spoon mm -hmm. if only i had a spoon we got our spoon I like using a little more miso. The written amount is about a quarter cup. We'll use a little bit more. Okay, there's our miso. I'm gonna put that in there. Then you want about three tablespoons of granulated sugar. Okay, we've got about one, two, three. Doesn't have to be exact. We're not baking. Those of you who uh, who have watched the movie Donnie Brasco, great film. It's a pinch versus a punch. Okay, but we're gonna take about a about two pinches of salt, kosher salt. We're gonna throw that in there. And now we're gonna take a whisk. We're gonna whisk it all together. Whisk, 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 whisk. Try not to make too much of a mess. You want all of that miso mixed into this. You don't want any big chunks. It will thicken as it's in the fridge. So don't worry if it's too watery. But you, as I said, you don't want big chunks in your marinade. All right, now that this is mixed up, we give this a smell right now. It's going to smell like a really crazy night in Tokyo, but that's fine. Um, it'll kind of mix all together and give it some nice notes once it's marinated and when you start cooking it. We're going to take this freezer bag. Once again, we want to marinate this for about two, three days in the fridge. Um, if afterwards you're not quite ready to cook, you can just throw it in the freezer and then thaw it afterwards. Um, if you really want to go crazy with the marinade, it is perfectly fine to let it sit for extra days. Uh, some people would say the more you marinate it, the better it gets. Um, so maybe we'll try that this time, see how it works out. So we got our freezer bag. Take the whisk out. I don't have to make too much of a mess. And we're going to pour this marinade right in there. Try to use a bigger bag as you do this because it will fill up quite a bit. And pour. There we 
of yarn. Okay. Try to get as much air out of it as possible. And then we're going to zip lock it. Make sure it's tight, otherwise you're gonna have leaks and you're gonna get miso marinated all over your fridge and freezer. <clears throat> Gotta mix it up evenly so that that marinade hits all the parts, all your fish. So you don't have a dry spot. You don't want to have fish that has half marinade on it and half dry because that would be kind of weird. Take one bite, ooh, delicious. Second bite, huh, bland. So here it is, mixed up. Once again, we're going to throw this in the fridge for about two to three days. Might freeze it. Maybe we'll hold it in the fridge longer and do an experiment as to how it marinades and ages with that. All right, so it's been seven days since we marinated this wild sockeye in the miso glaze. Here it is right there. Um, once again, we let it marinate for a few days before we put it in the freezer and we just thawed it out. So the first thing that we're going to do with this is we are going to take it out of the bag. And you want to just, with your fingers, remove any excess glaze. You don't want to wash it or use paper towels. Just any excess glaze can be removed and now here we are we have taken them out of the bag you can see there's still some glaze not a ton you don't want it to be caked in it so the first step is we're going to go to our uh, frying pan and we're going to fry these on both sides all right so we're going to take our salmon we're going to put it skin side up on the pan Mm -hmm. There you go. Remember, you got to heat up your oil so that it makes the sizzle sound when you put anything on it. If you put something on your pan and it doesn't sizzle, you put it on too early. So we're going to let this cook for about two minutes on each side. All right, during about two minutes, we're gonna carefully lift and flip our fish over. Okay, now you see it started to brown. Ha oh, ha, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, magical. Now we're gonna fry it skin side down for another two minutes to really close in the flavor it's going to keep the oil in the fish it doesn't seep out anywhere so that when we cut into the fish then it starts really swelling with the oils it's going to be delicious all right we've had our two minutes on the skin side down we're going to take our tongs and we're going to put it on this tray make sure there's enough room for all of our fish. Our next step after this is going to be to bake it in the oven for 10 minutes. So now that we've taken all of our fish, ooh, this one's, this one's trying to escape me. Once we've taken all of our fish off the flame, our oven is preheated to 400 degrees. middle rack we're going to stick it right in there and we're going to close the door all right so here we are all right we have it on our little wooden board we have our miso glazed salmon okay very delicate okay it's just gonna come apart like that all right here we are we're going to take a taste of this nice little piece of sockeye salmon Mmm, fantastic. You know what? I even like this better on the salmon because there's almost like a sweetness to it. It's very delicate. 
No, kind of gives you a plethora of different flavors. Here we are. Gives you a little kick from the sake and the mirin. Not too much. Hmm, delicious. Try this with us. Cook it yourself. Tell us what you think. Hit like, hit follow, and see what else we got.